Hey everyone, Dave Greco here again. And we're going to start on the next part of the tutorial series where we take this black and white piece that we did in our previous one and take it to color. And first off, I want to say thank you so much to everyone that is new to the channel and the support you guys have given me just from the first tutorial. It's been amazing. And it's totally inspiring to produce a ton of content for the channel. So thank you to all the new subscribers and everyone that helped me share the link to this. It's really been uh, overwhelming and amazing so far. So basically I want to show you kind of what I'm thinking when I want to take this thing to color and kind of the first steps that I do to take a black and white to color. So right away, I, I kind of have like an idea in my head on where I want to bring it. So I do want some like cool blues and uh, even the warm colors, I want them to be pretty cool in the piece. Um, usually during this time, I'll look around, I'll look on Pinterest, or Art Station for other things of inspiration and we'll kind of go from there. But I started off pretty simple. And this is something not everyone does, but this is something that I do recently. And so I like to get rid of a lot of the muted blacks in the piece. I think sometimes I feel like I compete with it later. So I go to make a new layer and I actually make it a lighten layer right here. And I'll grab a brush that I want. And sometimes I go to like really this kind of like dark red right here. It's almost like you were doing an underpainting in a, in a traditional media. You know, and I want this to kind of sit underneath the painting the entire time. And I won't use like a paint bucket and just fill the whole thing up. We will kind of just brush this around real lightly on the canvas. And so this is the light and layer is going to make it go over your darkest values. And I'll brush this over quite a bit of it, but I like to do it by hand because I like to make some parts more saturated than others. And then sometimes I let these, these reds peek through the painting as I'm doing it. So I always find this stage to be pretty nice. This is something I only started doing a couple of months ago, but I do like the result it has. Is it something I'm going to continue forever with my work? Eh, probably not. But I think right now it's um, giving me some pretty interesting results. So I might take this, make it a little more saturated over here. I'm, it's pretty pulled to the right quite a bit. But I know parts of it that I'm going to want these reds to really peek through. You think about like the ears. Maybe parts of the nose, some little parts of the eyelid, maybe around the lips. And I'm just thinking about this as like an underpainting. What little parts could peek through later when we're working on this? That's what I'm thinking here. All right. We'll just pepper this around a little bit. You know. And we have this totally on its own layer right here. And so we'll kind of let that say we'll get a little bit of it right here. That's pretty good. I think I'll usually bring it that far. I don't want to go too crazy with it. You could go too nuts and just turn the whole piece completely red. That's really not what I'm shooting for. Okay. And the next start that I do, I see a lot of artists, they may use like a color layer or some other type of layer. I do use an overlay layer or multiple layer to start just to put in the local color, just so I can start messing with some things. All right, so we're going to do an overlay. And I had mentioned getting pretty cool with the piece. Let's get some color in the background and get some all this local stuff in. Let me just grab a bigger brush here. And also I should have my brushes now provided in a link below. I have one brush set that I have, I keep available to people that should have a uh, Google Drive link. So if you guys want to grab that one, most of all the strokes that were made in the first one were made from the um, DG main brush. I'm still staying pretty messy with this. I don't mind if I go over parts of his face. I'm gonna get a little wild. So we, I say pretty desaturated to start with, right? I like to slowly build it up. So I'm thinking about going to the skin tones now. Now I wanna stay, I don't wanna get too crazy with my saturation. Let's just get a little bit in. Like it, so we're starting to get a little bit past the gray here. I think it's all about just having patience, you know. I can kind of see in the distance where I want my colors to go. So let's just start slowly building it up. You can see like it's pretty yellow. We get like a little more reds in there, a little more orange. And we'll kind of just pepper it around like this.
There we go. So now we're starting to get a little bit of idea of some of our color. I like to have some of that in the, um, in the eyes too. I don't want the eyes to be just some perfectly gray sphere. It also makes me think like, what color do we want to do his little vest thing? Do we want to go red? Do we want to go? We could actually make it try red. At least in this stage, we can kind of explore a little bit. And I was thinking I want to actually go pretty gray with his beard and all that. Right now the red could seem a little overwhelming, but we'll try it for now. We'll see what happens. And at the same time, I want to get a little bit of color, just a tiny bit into his facial hair. Just to pull it out a little bit. So it's almost like a almost looks like a light blue with so much blue, cool light in the painting. If I want this kind of like salt and pepper gray hair to kind of come through. We'll do that to bring it out. So right now I'm not thinking too far ahead. I'm just like, you know, trying to get some base stuff. You know, maybe I'll bring some of this bluish light in. I always talk about breaking up shapes. I don't want this whole thing to be like just a solid red. Maybe we can break it up with some of these other colors down here. That could be kind of neat. We'll flip it around here. Let's see what we got. Okay. And what we could do too is I might make another overlay layer. I, I um, and I'm not going too crazy with the overlay layers later, but I find at the beginning it's good to get a little bit of this in. So we kind of have this more of a um, navy royal blue down here, and so I want to get a little more this color. I think that could kind of play down here. Just a little pops of blue. just on that opposite side. We're just kind of playing on this at this part. All right. So basically we kind of still have like a mess, right? So let's make another layer, some off and overlay layer. We kind of go and see, and like we actually do have like quite a bit of cleanup to do on the piece. So I'm just gonna go back to a straight normal layer. Grab that kind of main brush. And I'm gonna go back and clean up a couple of shapes. I'm gonna go back to a little more desaturated, but pretty dark. And let's kind of clean up what, what kind of disappeared a little bit. Sometimes you lose a little bit of marks, but it's fine because all these little layers that you're doing, they're all building up together. You know, some of the stuff they it peeks through underneath and adds to the piece as a whole. You know, I kind of like that he's got bigger lashes. But see, we're always kind of just building up on the same painting. And all these reds, they add like a little more character. That's why so much of my stuff, I, I leave those layers. I like having these little things underneath that kind of give it life. It's the same way if you worked a uh, oil painting, right? All those little cool little things that sit underneath can just add to the painting. And so if you guys hear a lot of clicking while I paint, it's because, so I keep my index finger and my middle finger on the bracket keys, and I'm constantly changing my brush size like crazy. It's something like as I work, my fingers, my left hand fingers are always changing brush size. I think it just, I don't know if it helps give me like a little bit of diversity in the brush itself. So you can just kind of hear that tapping over and over. It's pretty strange, but I don't even think it's something in my body even notices anymore. Cleaning up a little of this eyebrow, you can kind of start figuring out little shapes and playing with these little ideas and little cuts in there. And, you know, same thing with the nose here, right? So I want to get some of these darks back in. And one thing that's always interesting about the nostrils, not going to a black in the nostrils, but you can really go just like a really deep, deep red down here. And that itself makes it feel super dark and it always feels great in a nostril. You're not actually going to black, but it's going to feel dark, you know. And that's definitely like an old, old kind of thing. I remember learning way back in art school when it came to oil painting. I get that question a lot too. Is like, 
you don't have to be like a traditional artist to be good. In digital painter, you don't have to. They don't necessarily feed into each other, but it, I, it is nice to take some lessons you've learned and incorporate to the other one, and probably vice versa. You know. I would say I was never a good oil painter. I spent so much of my career in digital at this point that um, I'd be a mess with a brush. I think at this point, just because you just not used to how the medium handles and all that stuff. I'm used to certain techniques that I do digitally that I th would have trouble pulling off. I think it's just just even my workflow itself, you know, it'd be tough. So I'm just going around cleaning up a little bit here. Let's see what we want to do. Take this light. This kind of goes in the this part of the eyelid here. Okay. So let's go and start. It's like you're looking around the piece and trying to identify problems. Like what should be tweaked next? You know, what do we need to clean up? And these paintings is especially when you're going to color, it's almost like you're roaming around the piece just cleaning stuff up. If you know, that's what it feels like sometimes. You're just kind of like a vacuum cleaner, navigating your way across the piece. Cleaning up little parts. Like, I'm not sure why this eyebrow over here is making such a crazy shape, but I kind of like it. Kind of is like nonsense. But that's what, that's fine. That's fine for us. All right. It's it's kind of like where I've been seeing my work going like too. It's kind of an incorporation of painting and line, which I'm not fighting too much because I, I like the results that it's been having lately. So we're still kind of going around. Let's see how this stuff's gonna work. All right. So one thing I notice when I look at the skin, like it's very cold, right? It almost looks like a very light kind of metalish brown for his skin, which is uh might not be what we're going for here. So let's, we could go to another overlay or multiply layer. I think I end up using these to more kind of adjust subtle colors on it. If I want to get like a little more orange in it, like over here, I'm real light with the brush. Like I'm barely pressing it against the uh, Cintiq here. But see how you can start to get like a little bit of color in there. I like to build it up real slow. Let's not go that red. Let's go right here. You know, you're going to have a lot of your color in your cheeks, in your nose, you know, right here in your eye. I think if you neglect those colors and start getting, it's almost like you want that idea that blood is running underneath the skin, right? And that's like when you see like someone or a zombie that looks dead, it's because how cold the skin looks because there's no blood running through it. So you're always trying to get some of that in it, but I want to get, I don't want to get like too warm. So I'm just trying to brush it around. And especially with this being in some layer, you can always kind of pop it right off. Or at least like adjust it a tiny bit. Like I said, I like to build this up real slow. Okay. So let's grab some of this eye right here. And I want to get a little bit more shape to it. That lower eyelid's probably a little too low. Looks like he didn't want his eye to fall out, but we can mess with that later. So it's almost like you're still always trying to render shapes. I'm, I want to render the sphere inside his eye. It's pretty important. I will kind of bring this up a little bit. Let's see here. There we go. Give him some like large lower eyelids. That way he can look as tired as I feel most of the time. All right, and like same thing, we're still messing with shapes within shapes. I'm looking at all these little shapes. That I wanted to still feel like a nose overall, but like what are these little shapes that can play nice down here and create some cool little visual interest within the larger piece. So that's always something I'm, I'm still thinking about. Let's get a little more of this blue in his facial here. here. Now this is a time where we could use a different brush. 
But for the sake of it, we can kind of use the same brush and just kind of show us how we might want to work some strokes onto this. I'm still kind of dabbing out. I want like my brush to go in the direction of this hair. Just so to give the uh, idea and movement of it, of where it should be going here. And so you see also that I do color pick quite a lot. So like when I'm blending, I color pick next to the color, slightly wash it on, color pick next to it, slowly put it on. Yeah, that helps quite a bit. And so my thumb is always over the alt key as well. I think my left hand is going to turn into some type of claw soon. And so we're kind of just brushing that down. Same this over here. So I'm going to see, I want to keep this video about the same time as the last one. I'll see how much I can get down there. And if you guys want, we can do like a sped up part at one point just to see the final piece. Like, say there's a piece I want to put a couple hours into it. Um, you guys might be more interested in seeing different videos and like, let's do a whole thing on how I draw, you know, hair, female hair, or how I might approach this. There's so many subjects that people have suggested that we take a look at that we don't want to waste a uh, more videos just working on this guy. But maybe we'll throw just kind of a, a finished version of him up for everybody. And we can just see a whole time lapse and we'll show like a final at the end. That could be pretty cool. So I'm just going around the whole thing still. It's the same kind of thing I was talking about before is always navigating around the piece. Always just traveling around, cleaning up what looks okay and what doesn't. And so I want to clean up these edges around the side of his face. If you go too much of a hard line at the side of the face, you could end up looking like you flatten a lot of the image out. And so even if it looks like a line when you go to that edge of the face, you gotta always think that that edge of the face is curving around. So there's like, you can give like a little slight blur to it. Just the idea that it is curving around the side of the head. That's important. So we're just kind of putting out little shapes here. Cleaning up other ones. We'll flip again. Also thinking too that you know I like to get like a little bounce light sometimes on the little bottom ridge of the nose. There's so much blue in the piece, maybe a lot of our shadow areas. We can get some of this blue in here. You know, we'll definitely go with the whole warm light, cool shadows for this one. The same thing up here, maybe we'll get some and we have this blue back here, I can just color pick it off it real quick, save me a little time. Grab it. Just put a little blue in here. Could work out okay. So lips should be a little darker than the rest here. You gotta be careful. I don't want him to look like he's, you know, just threw a fresh shade of lipstick on either, but he's definitely, it's, you know, it's usually a darker value than the rest. And I actually want some, I think we might want to bring some of this facial hair down here. I don't know if we want to go, we can always explore this. So he has more of kind of like a full goatee thing. And that's what's cool too, is you're still not married to anything that we've done before. So I'm just taking some of these colors that we've already put onto the canvas and we're just slowly working them up around the piece. I'm still thinking about where the light's coming from. We're still just having a pretty generic kind of light coming down this direction and then casting shadows on the other side. But see, I'm cutting into this thing too, just trying to make those shapes that could be interesting. And we're cutting around. I'm gonna bring some of that skin back in here. So there's a little more gradual of where his facial hair comes up. This is something we can tweak and fix later as well. All right, so we can bring some of these, this color up here that we introduced down there just to paint up and figure out this stuff here. All 
and we're just cutting around. There we go. So even like down here, let me grab some of this color so you can see. I'm always looking at like small little microcosms of the piece. So like this piece in here, how is this all playing with each other down here? Is this going to be interesting with how we highlight the neck underneath this facial hair? Uh, maybe that actually pulls a pretty strong shadow down into this part of the neck. Should we build it up? Should we make sure that neck feels like it's curving around and not like a flat piece of paper? So there's still a lot of muddiness within this thing, but it's, I always feel like I have to be patient. You, you always hit parts of this painting, you're like, oh my god, this thing is not turning out. I'm a fraud. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And uh, I think that on most pieces. And then you sl I slowly just keep working yourself around the piece, and then hopefully you can <laughs> dig yourself out. So I do like to get some of these reds up in the back of the ear here. And we're going to take this and curve it around. Like I said, we're not going to get super complicated with the lighting on this piece. Uh, especially as this is more kind of like an introductory tutorial to everything that we're doing here. Because one thing we could absolutely do is say, all right, we have this primary light coming from this direction. You know, what if we introduced a secondary light that's like real subtle coming from over here just to make it pop a little bit more, which is always something you can consider. Like maybe just take like a opposite light and we'll just as an example, you know, figure out where all this is going. All these kind of edges on the other side. You know, this one's a little, little mess, but and you can kind of figure out where these lights are going to hit. You know, and that could give like a little extra oomph to the piece, you know. And just figure out where everything's going to be. Yeah, maybe that's something we can actually keep. You know, it's not too complicated, but maybe it just adds a little bit. It's, I like to figure out some of these lighting scenarios as the piece continues. Um, you know, something we can always take out later. But maybe like it adds a little bit more to it. And I try to brush it in a little bit. Um, I'm, I am always afraid of if it's so severe. If you want to go room lighting, you have to be careful with your room lighting. Like you can really flatten things out. You know, like you should still always remember that light is going around a piece and it's not just like a hard edge line. So we'll get like a couple extra hairs that we see down here. You know, maybe it's actually catching some of these crazy lids he has. And I don't want to like rim light, like the whole side of his face isn't going to get in. Just a couple key areas that kind of will help accentuate it. You know, I try to stay as accurate as you could. You know, this, this part of the eye might even catch a little bit of it. We'll kind of brush it up into these. There we go. The same token, let's push it back a tiny bit. You know, a lot of these might actually get more of it as it comes up into this. And we can brush some down a little bit below. Just uh, I want to pull out the shape too so we're seeing the bottom of his face compared to everything else as well. It all kind of blends into the same plane around his neck. He's got he's got like a bulbous kind of goatee at this point. That's okay. You you do it. You do it, old man. I wouldn't mess with this dude. But it looks like I'm trying to look at compared to the other one. It looks like this thing actually probably comes over more like this. And we're just brushing a lot of those same colors. At the same time, we could take this and get even more highlights. We're slowly building up our highlights. 
I don't want to jump into anything. I don't want to get like the highlight on the nose, the highlight on the eyes. That's for much later. I just get a, you just savor those. You can't jump to those. You know. You're, you're constantly doing like cross comparisons of your value and color as you work around the piece. So I think it's important to wait. You'll get there and it'll feel even sweeter when you do get to it. Here we go. Bring some of this out. Since this should be getting a, quite a bit of the light as well. All right. We will give like a little kind of wetness to the lip though. Not too crazy, based on what I was just saying. We'll get a little bit in there. All right, I'm just massaging that around. All right, so another thing we can do too is I really wanna actually push the contrast this a little bit more. So one thing we can do is we can make another layer and go down to multiply, make a multiply layer. Now I always consider these more feel like if you're doing like a glaze on a painting, right? Or wash, one of them, it's been a while. <laughs> and uh, let's see here, take pretty muted color and what you're gonna get is, I can't remember what this brush is, is this brush too messy? Yeah, that's got a little too much texture in it. Go back to this other one, I'm kinda using like the same two brushes right now. I'm gonna knock this layer down opacity a little bit but see, if you go over a piece, you, you kind of have this kind of thing going, right? It's almost like you're pushing the entire painting back, but I'm not gonna just wash over the whole thing and erase all the work we've done. But I do want like a little more contrast between him and the background. But I don't wanna erase a lot of the detail of the brush texture and stuff that we have there. So let me just try swinging this around. And a lot of this for me always feels like experimental. Like I'm just kind of, let me see what this does. Let me see if this helps the painting. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I spin in circles for hours and hours. Going crazy, trying to figure out how to make a painting work. Sometimes, I'm sure everyone's been in that position, you're just kind of like in saving mode. Like, there's a couple ideas I like in the painting. How do I, how do I save it? Because there's some things that aren't working. Painting is like, serious problem solving. That's really what you're doing. You're going around trying to solve all these problems. And that can be pretty tough, especially someone like me that was, you know, wasn't very good in math or school or any type of problem solving. So we're getting a little more contrast between his face and the background, which uh, which I like. I'm seeing, I always wonder if we bring more of like a, a green in here. I think it's too much kind of red on our stuff. We'll slowly brush this green, just straight on top of the whole thing. I'm going pretty light, so I'm not like, if I push too hard, we're just gonna have that action happening. Let's just brush that up. I'm still kind of following some forms. You know, I'll go push pretty hard on some areas just to kind of, and we're still doing the same thing where we're cutting shapes. mess with it, see what happens. I still wanna make sure that we have the bottom of his neck here. So I grab kind of like a, like a real kind of, he's actually pink. It's not gonna to get too many highlights here, but I, want, I still wanna show form and that it's his skin. I'm trying to figure out little things. Like I don't want like a tangent of his goatee and his shirt to be creating a problem here. So there we go, there's that. And so one, one thing I noticed right away when I look up is how kind of muddy all this at the top feels, right? So I might grab this. I might go a little cool on his forehead. Maybe we can figure out the way we do color and force the eye down. Let's actually bring some cool light and we'll keep some of the warmer tones towards the center of his face. So it's like we're brushing out a lot of this previous work in here. 
We're all still kind of just building on top of it. See how these like real slight blues at the top? You can do the same thing over here. We're getting rid of a lot of the underdrawing that could make it feel too muddy. Uh, we could get all these. It's almost like I'm kind of like taking little notes in my head, like where a lot of these wrinkles and shapes were, and we can make new ones and better ones on top of it. I still want this highlight here, but it's like a cool highlight. If you go here, we can actually add, go more to like the blue spectrum here and a nice cool highlight up top. That feels pretty good. And then you can see down here like how kind of muddy and messy a lot of this is. We're just going around and just kind of like trying to clean it up a little bit. And you can be, I can be careful because if I go around and you can like smooth so much out, you could lose a lot of the um, line and feeling that you had before. So I don't want to go too crazy. But it's worth getting some in here. So you can see we've removed quite a bit. I want to go back in and add a bunch of that kind of wrinkle and stuff back into it. All right, let's do this. Let's go up. Let's grab, I kind of go around like this little brownish color. Let's kind of figure out where we had a lot of these shapes. See, I'm smoothing it out. I'm so not only am I creating the line, I'm still at the same time trying to figure out the form of it. Maybe it's too dark. We just want some subtle things in here. We want some of this highlight to hit this other side. Especially if you have light hit going from this direction. Right here, it's going to slowly go into shadow as this is like a full bump. And then directly on the other side, the light is curving around it and hitting directly right away. If that makes any sense. So you're basically going to have it go right into shadow because you're seeing this other side. And then bam, right away into this highlight, which oh, you see these and they always like feel pretty nice. I like to find little areas where light can do that. I think it helps quite a bit. All right, let's make that go up here. Same thing, we're still just cleaning up all around it here. Like I said, we're just cleaning up and then maybe we have some other kind of forehead line shapes in here. I'm always looking at like the interest in these lines. Is that interesting if we make a line that kind of does this up top? Is that also interesting? But still gives us the same idea of what we're shooting for here. I want to bring this hairline quite a bit back. And same thing here. What we could do is this highlight still kind of goes over this whole area, no matter whether you have an eyebrow here or not, and your eyebrow is just going to sit on top of this shape. So I might brush it out and then we'll draw the eyebrow back on top. I'm just smoothing this out, seeing how that works. What we could do, grab the airbrush here. Let's see, let's get like a, this darkish color. Let's do a kind of, so it's kind of airbrushy, but then we're gonna go on top of it with some more solid line. Always looks kind of nice. Then we could take the highlight on this side and just like slice right through it maybe. Give it something. Let's change this a bit. I'll take some of these darks from the top of the lid and bring it down to the eye a tiny bit. Do the same thing on the other side. I don't want him to seem like he's got like, he's a Terminator or something. 
And then you like glowing red eyes. Not what we're going for. All right. You know, at the same time, I could spend more and more time on this forehead, but like, I know we're gonna go back to it and keep cleaning. But I still want to keep moving around the piece. Still, just so many things at this stage of a painting where you want to hit. So I'm just kind of cleaning up other areas. I'm not really using overlay layers or any type of layers at this point. I'm taking just color picking colors around it and slowly figuring out how we want to work this piece. It's like I look at some of these reds. I'm like, I like some of these reds right here. But it's too much of like a solid block right now. Let me just break it up a little bit. And still give this kind of idea of hair coming forward. Just subtle things. You know, I want to make sure these lines feel they feel good. I want to make sure the lines feel right. There we go. There's that. And even some of this light blue on this other side, I man. I want to bring it out a little bit. But then I look, and so I want clear values between Sivan's face and his background. Like right now, if I actually black and white this piece, let's see here. You can see how much this disappears. And I don't think for uh, this piece right now, it's what we want. So maybe we do go like a little darker towards the side of his face. just to separate it out. I'm still kind of just slowly blending it back into this rest of his cheek. I want to try to mirror that kind of cheekbone that he's got on that opposite side, so it makes a little more sense. This is one of those same things with the highlight we were talking about on his forehead is how this curves down into the shadow and then from that same angle if the light was coming down it hit right in it straight hit it you can get some pretty pronounced you know jawbone to cheekbone type stuff by doing that and then you just learn like little kind of things as you keep painting you know it was you know i always say you know you just you get better by more paintings you do. Every painting you do, you get like 0.001% better. You know, if you can learn a little thing from every painting that goes into your next painting, and then the piece you produce after that adds a little bit more. And, you know, a couple hundred thousand pieces later, you won't believe where you are, but it really is. It's just a, a lot about producing, producing work. It's so important. All right, so we're a little bit more here. Just see here, we'll go a couple minutes more and if you got, maybe we'll just throw like a time lapse at the end of this piece, just to see the piece finished out. Um, basically all the techniques I'm using now, I'm just gonna carry through slowly as I wrap up the entire rest of the piece, right? And so that was my first build up from going from black and white to color. And then it's just like problem solving throughout the whole thing. I can tell that like, well, you know what? Maybe this eye on the side actually is looking a little too bright now. It's, it's a little distracting. Let's just knock it down for now and maybe we'll bring it up later. You know, um, let's figure out some of these details on his shirt. Let's figure out the colors. He kind of has like a pouty bottom lip. Maybe we can fix that a little bit. Um, at one point I wanted to really figure out the dimensions and the feel of his nose. But we have a base color and everything to start with now. We've we've uh, established, you know, a somewhat of a palette for ourselves. And so they were just going around and I'm just, I'm cutting out different shapes that we can use, that type of stuff. So that's just kind of carry out through the rest of the piece. All right, so I think we should do like a little time lapse right now just to blast through the rest of it. You know, I like doing these in real time, but say if this, be cool to put like another couple hours into this piece without making uh, this couple hours long because there's so many other stuff we want to get to. 
Let me just pop the recording on. Let me uh, fly through painting the rest of this thing, and then I will see you guys at the rest of the video. All right, everybody, thanks so much, and I'll see you at the end. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. And you know what we could do too is maybe you could try to put some of the stuff that you saw me do in the past tutorial to see how that applies to your own characters. Uh, try taking a piece of black and white and do those simple steps that I did and see if that improves how you approach color in your piece. That would be fantastic. All right, till next time, everybody. Thanks so much.